Smallpox eradication is by far public health's greatest success. Removing the burden of smallpox changed the world. Now the challenge is, could it ever come back? Nobody wants to think about how could such an amazing victory ever be lost. But the truth is, smallpox is only gonna come back if somebody intentionally wants it to come back. For many years, people have been worried that smallpox could be recreated in a laboratory. This is a big concern. In 2016, a scientist in Canada, David Evans, ordered pieces of DNA from a laboratory in Germany, and he stitched them together and made a horsepox virus. Now, all these pox viruses are very much alike. It's only smallpox that is devastating to humans. But if you can splice genes together to make any number of pox viruses, you can do it with smallpox just as easily. No one had ever made a virus related to smallpox before. Dr. Evans was the first one to actually do it. Now, this was a big deal for both scientists and for national security personnel because the technology and techniques to make horsepox would be exactly the same as what it would take to make smallpox. If smallpox were to reappear just as it was before, it would enter a world that has very few people vaccinated and it would be truly devastating. In the 1700s, smallpox was just an, a never-ending nightmare. You were always terrified of the next big smallpox outbreak. It could just claim your whole family. I think we've said from the very beginning that there is no way in the world that we can be 100% certain that there is no virus out there anywhere. The Strategic National Stockpile is the nation's repository of medicines and medical supplies that we think might be necessary to respond to a public health emergency anywhere in the United States. The Strategic National Stockpile was put in place following 9-11. It's a very large pre-purchase of countermeasures, diagnostic kits, masks, vaccines, antibiotics, things that could be used in a major bioterrorist event. We hold vaccines for a number of different disease threats that we're prepared for, such as anthrax, botulism, and smallpox. We spend a lot of time being prepared. That's really what we're here for, and that's what this is all about. There are at least three occasions where I know that catches of smallpox virus have been discovered, as we just found out at um, NIH. In 2014, they found six vials marked smallpox at NIH in Washington, and they were all not only smallpox, but they were potentially infectious smallpox. The smallpox was all supposed to go into the two freezers in Russia and the United States. But we know the Soviets spread it out all over their system, so have we got it all? Did we ever even find it all? I don't believe there are only two samples of smallpox on Earth. It's out there in other laboratories. It's out there in other freezers. So according to the State Department, there are nations that we really suspect of having barrel the virus, whether they have old samples or whether they create it through genetic engineering. And I know a lot of people said they can make it. Today, synthetic biology offers the potential of being able to create smallpox from scratch in a laboratory. Synthetic biology presents enormous potential benefits for humanity. We can potentially make new foods and new medicines and new crops and new fuels but we have to also be aware of the potential risks. And one of those risks is the creation of viruses.
the code for how smallpox can be made. It's just available on the internet. There's a four-letter chemical code in our DNA. Viruses have the same code. If you tell a scientist, I have this series of letters that represents a gene, they can physically stick the building blocks of genes together to build a virus gene. So it's literally sequencing every chemical letter, every A, C, G, and T, in the right order to get the entire 200,000 letter sequence of the smallpox virus. And a scientist recreated horsepox in the lab doing just that, taking mail-ordered pieces of DNA, stitching them together, and getting an infectious virus. Here is some good proof that this can actually be done and done for not that much money. Making smallpox synthetically wouldn't be trivial for anything but one of the most sophisticated labs. But with the technology today, it could be done. And we worry that eventually this will become easier for people to do with smallpox. And somebody in their kitchen would be able to do this, or somebody in a country where we don't have as much visibility will be able to do this. The only thing that's lacking from making the virus from scratch is money and intent. Three or four years from now, high school kids will be able to do what our top scientists were doing in top secret programs in the 60s. It will never be more difficult to make a bioweapon than it is today, because every day we go forward, it gets easier.